Um, my name is Mike Speak Wynn, up. and uh, I'm here with the Anne Frank Trust. What this exhibition tries to do in a, in a contemporary way is to give a bit of room for young people coming through, and adults as well, to reflect on their own attitudes, uh, to challenge those attitudes, and to help them uh, think about how they perceive others, especially those people who are different to themselves. The Anne Frank Trust decided to try and bring this exhibition to Northern Ireland. This is the first time this exhibition has been here. Stand up. Because of the past couple of years with the rise of racism in Northern Ireland, it's about how we cope with difference and how we respect other people's difference and how we act responsibly. Really, I'm, I'm a refugee, not a survivor. I haven't been through the camps, but uh, my mother and five of my brothers, um, they uh, were taken to uh, the ghettos in Minsk, which is on the Russian um, side of, of uh, Germany, and they, were, uh, they lived there until they went into um, the concentration camp at Mali, a place called Man Mali Trostany, which was a small camp, very brutally um, run by um, uh, Nazis and um, built by uh, Russian slave labor. The, the living conditions were dreadful. They, uh, uh, they lived on um, wooden slats, uh, with a bit of straw for bedding, and that was all. Um, but uh, just as horrific was the journey from Vienna to uh, Minsk when they went on trains which had um, one central uh, place for your bodily needs. Um, the train stopped once a day to take on food and to empty that. And it was very overcrowded, and um, the one that a lot of people died of, of, of disease before they actually got to uh, the concentration camps. So that was um, that's how they lived. I mean, this um, concentration camp had no gas chambers, so the people were taken out into the forests that surrounded the village, and while loud music was played. They were shot um, and then buried, buried in mass graves. Um, before they were shot, they had to hand all their personal possessions into the Germans and walk in their underclothes to be shot. Every possible degrading thing that could be done to them was done. And the extraordinary thing is that the, the Austrians kept meticulous records of what happened to everybody. You'd have thought they would want to do a burn them and not let anybody know what was going on. Not a bit of it. They had uh, names and addresses and exactly what happened, so that's how we found out. And then the uh, post-war criminal trials that took place in um, Nuremberg. There was a lot of evidence given there that uh, made you know you know, what the conditions were like and, and what was happening. So it was all sort of put together piecemeal well after it happened. It um, came out on the trains, um, supervised by nuns, um, and it, it came out of Austria, I should have told you, I was just, <clears throat> with my um, little uh, brown papier mache, mache case, um, a ball, and some, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the cheese, the, it's um, smoked cheese. Mm. So, and I'm, extra, the extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary thing is that I love smoked cheese and um, any board game, whether I'm playing it or whether anyone else is playing it, is fascinating to me. Um, so, they brought us out and then we were, deposited in a huge railway, in a huge um, uh, yard at Harwich or somewhere like that. 
and then we were collected like a parcel for, by actually it was the WS and then they took us to our respective homes. Um, it, I'd got over here by a local committee that was, had got together. There were committees all over the country in England who organised themselves to bring out these children. And they had to raise £50 per child to give to the government. And uh, that, that in today's money is a lot more. I think it's about 5000 But My other sisters, one went to America before the war broke out. She was the eldest. Another sister came to England after me, but I, um, I didn't know she was in England for two or three years. But we did meet, um, and then my two of my brothers um, went to Denmark, the Danish Women's League of Peace or something, title like that, um, organised uh, for 25 Viennese boys to go and live on De Danish farms and. Um, my two brothers were fortunate enough to go there and um, <clears throat> one of them has kept in touch with the family ever since, until last year. Although <clears throat> when, um, uh, after they'd been in Denmark for some time, they had the option of going to live in Palestine and they went. Um, and then joined the Palestine Brigade of the British Army and went to the uh, Second World War, Italy, North Africa, and then went back to um, Palestine, as it then was, to be demarked. And then the War of Independence broke out, and of course they joined up as Palestinians and fought against the British. I think um, <clears throat> it's, it's so graphic and everybody has heard of it, to actually see how children, talking from a children's perspective, they can identify with them, they can identify <coughs> with um, Anne, if they read her diary or bits of it, um, it's all about things that young girls talk about, their boyfriends, their hairstyles, who likes them, who they don't like, you know, what they're afraid of, and all those sort of things, it's brilliant. <coughs> to get children to empathise with somebody uh, who had such a, um, a sad, sad life in the end, although she'd been so plucky all through it. Um, and of course, it's an example of all the other genocides, like the fool and that sort of thing as well. Um, well, this is the, the first time the exhibition, this particular exhibition, has come to Northern Ireland. And we're really, really extremely thankful and delighted that Strabane District Council has taken us on board. They have been absolutely fantastic. We're really, really thankful as well to the Community Relations Council and, of course, to Peace 3 funding programmes that has really helped to bring this exhibition here. Without their help, this would not have happened.